Hello everyone and welcome back to Easy Dentistry, a channel that makes dental education incredibly easy and interesting. Today we are uploading part 3 of Pharmacodynamics. This lecture is in continuation with part 1 and part 2 which are already uploaded. I highly recommend you all to watch part 1 and part 2 first before we proceed with this lecture. And first of all, please subscribe to our channel right now if you have not yet done. I sincerely request you all to subscribe to us right away. Come on guys, if you want more such understanding and easy lectures, please subscribe to us and also hit on the bell icon so that whenever we upload a new lecture, you get notification. So in this lecture, part 3 of pharmacodynamics, we would be studying a very important long answer question which is asked in exam from this chapter that is the combined effects of drugs in which we will be studying synergism and antagonism. So without wasting any time, let's discuss what is synergism. So, in Greek language, the word syn means together and ergon means work. So, synergism is working together. When the action of one drug is facilitated or increased by the action of other drug, it is called as a synergistic drug pair. Suppose these are two drugs, drug 1 and drug 2. If the action of drug 2, it increases the action of drug 1, these dr two drugs 1 and 2 are called as synergistic drug pair. Now, in synergistic drug pair, both the drug have same action uh, have action in same direction or the action of one drug is enhanced by the action of the other drug. So synergism is of two types, additive kind of synergism and supra additive kind of synergism. In additive kind of synergism, the effect of the two, two drugs are in same direction and the effects of the two drugs are simply added up. So the effect of the combined effect of drug A and drug B is equal to the effect of drug A and the effect of the drug B. So the effects of the drug A and drug B are just added up in additive synergism. The example of additive synergism is aspirin and paracetamol causes analgesia, nitrous oxide and ether in general anesthesia, amlodipine and atenolol as antihypertensives and glibentamide and metformin as hypoglycemic drugs. Now, in additive synergism, the, the positive drug effects are uh, positively added but the side effects of the drugs don't add up. So, the combination of the two drugs is better tolerated than the higher dose of one component. So, syn additive synergism is used in many diseases. Now, in supra-additive synergism, the effect of the combination of two drugs is greater than the individual component. So, the effect of drug A and drug B given together is always more than the effect of of the individual component. Examples of supra-additive drug combination is the acetylcholine or, uh, and physostigmine. It inhibits the, uh, the physostigmine inhibits the breakdown of acetylcholine. Levodopa plus carbidopa or ben benzirazide it uh, inhibition of peripheral metabolism of levodopa. Then adrenaline plus cocaine or desipramine. This cocaine or desipramine inhibits neuronal uptake of adrenaline. Then sulfamethoxazole and trimethoprim. It se causes sequential blockage of the folate metabolism. So these are some of the important examples of supra additive drug combination. Now, let us study what is antagonism. Now, when one drug decreases or abolishes the action of another drug, they are said to be antagonistic. So, if a drug 2, it reduces or, or abolishes the effect of drug 1, then drug 1 and drug 2 are said to be 
antagonistic pair so the effect of drug a and b given together is is always less than the individual effect of drug a and drug b so in this these drug a and drug b form antagonistic drug pair usually in an antagonistic pair one drug is inactive and it reduces the response of another drug there are various types of antagonism these are physical antagonism chemical antagonism physiological antagonism which is also called as functional antagonism and receptor antagonism which is of two types the competitive receptor antagonism and the non competitive receptor antagonism let us study each of these kinds of antagonism in detail first the physical antagonism as the name implies it is based upon the physical properties of the drug example of which is the charcoal it absorbs alkaloids charcoal it prevents the absorption of alkaloid so it is used in alkaloid poisoning second type of antagonism is the chemical antagonism the two drugs react chemically with each other form an forming an inactive product so drug 1 and drug 2 they undergo chemical reaction to form an inactive product example is uh, potassium permanganate it oxidizes alkaloids and so it is used in gastric lavage secondly tannins and alkaloids they react together to form alkaloidal tannins and the chelating agents they react with the metals then physiological or functional antagonism in which the two drugs act on different receptors by different mechanism suppose these are two drugs 1 and 2 these two drugs they react with different uh, receptors and they follow a different mechanism of action but the resultant pharmacological effects of these two drugs are opposing to each other example of such is glucagon and insulin on the blood sugar level so these two drugs act on different receptors by different mechanism but have opposite effects on same physiological system so the pharmacological effects are opposite to each other thirdly the receptor antagonism in receptor antagonism one drug acts as an antagonist and blocks the receptor action of another drug that is the agonist so antagonist blocks the agonist in receptor antagonism this is very important type of antagonism now let us study the mechanism of action of drugs in receptor antagonism the physiological signal molecules they act through the receptors now if there is blockage of these receptors by certain antagonist there is profound pharmacological effects on the body as the physiological signals cannot act there are two types of this uh, receptor antagonism these are the competitive type and the non competitive type let us study each in detail now under normal conditions the agonist drug it binds with the binding site of the receptor and this binding creates the response but in competitive antagonism which is also called as equilibrium type of antagonism the agonist and the antagonist are chemically similar to each other so you can see in this diagram the agonist and the competitive antagonist are chemically similar to each other and both of them they compete with each other for the same binding site so it they, both of these drug uh, compete with each other for the same binding site now the antagonist has an affinity to the binding site but it does not have any intrinsic activity so if the antagonist it combines with the binding site the resultant response is zero so the drug the dose response curve 
of the agonist shift rightwards and but there is no suppression of the maximal response so this is the effect of competitive antagonism now what happens in case of partial agonist now the partial agonist and full agonist both have affinity for the same receptor so the partial agonist it com it competes and antagonizes the full agonist because this partial agonist it binds with the receptor this produces a sub maximal or a partial response now what happens in non competitive antagonism now in non competitive antagonism the agonist and the antagonist are chemically different from each other and this antagonist it does not bind to the receptor of the agonist it does this if uh, it does this is the receptor of the agonist this antagonist it does not bind with the receptor but it forms a binding with an allosteric site which uh, which is present uh, near by the binding uh, receptor site of the agonist so this non competitive antagonist it binds to the allosteric site so binding of this non competitive antagonist to the allosteric site alters the receptor in such a way that it is unable to combine with the agonist so binding of this non competitive antagonist to the uh, to the allosteric site it causes changes in the receptor so that the agonist can no longer bind to this receptor site the ag in non competitive kind of uh antagonism the you can see that the agonist and the antagonist they bind at different sites so there is no competition between the agonist and the antagonist also the agonist drug drug curve is shifted to right and is flattened out so you can see here the agonist drug uh, uh, the agonist drc curve or the dose response curve when a non competitive antagonist is present it shift towards the right and also it flattens down now let us see what is the difference between the competitive and non competitive antagonism in competitive antagonism the agonist and the antagonist it binds to the common binding site while in non competitive antagonism the antagonist and the agonist they both bind both bind at two different sites now in competitive antagonism the agonist and the antagonist are chemically similar to each other but in non competitive they are totally different from each other now in competitive antagonism there is right shift rightward shifting of the dose response curve of the agonist while in non competitive antagonism the drc becomes flat now competitive antagonism is also called as surmountable antagonism but the non competitive antagonism is unsurmountable then competitive antagonism depends upon the concentration of both the agonist and the antagonist while the non competitive antagonism depends upon the concentration of antagonist alone example of competitive antagonism is acetylcholine and atropine while non competitive antagonism example is diazepam and bicuculin now this synergism and and antagonism are very important so we have uploaded an exclusive lecture on them now one more kind of antagonism is the non equilibrium antagonism in non equilibrium kind of antagonism the antagonist forms strong covalent bonds or dissociates slowly from the receptor in other words the antagonist have strong affinity for the receptor 
Now the agonist molecule are unable to reduce this affinity of the antagonist to the receptor. This results to the formation of non-equilibrium kind of antagonism. And in non-equilibrium kind of antagonism, the dose response curve of the agonist is rightward and is flat. So next lecture will be on the pharmacodynamics part 4 or the concluding part in which we will be discussing the drug dosage and the factors modifying drug action. Please subscribe to us right now if you have not yet done. Till then happy studying.